there were days at the beginning, before it was built, before it was open, I had my doubts. Uh, I think because I was not a manager as you were. I was a dirt level archaeologist. I was out here digging. And I just, I came to love the place and love the story. And the more I understood about it, the more I, the more I started thinking, are we going to mess this up? You know, are we doing the right thing here? Geez, I don't know. I mean, I, the whole view of the place and the look of it and the feel. I spent 10 years out here digging. Uh, and my, that's a long time in anybody's career. And there were times in there I thought, oh, geez, I, I wonder if we're doing the right thing. But after it was open and after, and then I led a public dig for years where you got the public coming right around your pit, standing there, asking questions day after day after, and of course a lot of repetition and things, but a lot of great questions, a lot of interest from people. People who would come back year after year to say, I was here last year, but what did you find since then? Or yeah. what did you learn about what you found last year? Yeah. And that it provided this dynamic part to it. And I just saw all the good the place was doing in terms of instructing people in, in what we do as archaeologists and why we do it. That's, I know you, you dealt with this as an archaeologist. We all kind of grew up facing this, am I relevant, debate. You know, I dig in the ground, I come up with broken bones and little bits of stone tools. And is, there, is it just sort of idle academic, you know, um, uh, research interests of our own, or is there a greater public good from it? And I think it's projects like this that make us all realize that, yeah, there is. And this is a this is a classic example. This is a place where it's applied, applied archaeology, you could call it, and we can see the tangible benefits. I think, you know, 20 years and two million, two million people later, we can see this is, it's done a, a huge amount of good. Well, I think we all had misgivings of one sort or another, but I mean, mine were a little different than yours. I mean, I obviously because I was championing it from the start. I, I had gotten long past the point about whether or not it should be done, but it was more the the how, and the how in terms of, of, of could it be done effectively. Because, I mean, the, the, the real difficulty with a prehistoric archaeological site uh, like this, uh, and, and with this kind of culture, is they are not self-evident. I mean, it isn't, a, I mean, you walk up to the pyramids, um, the, the pyramids, you know, what, what more can you say, what more do you need to say? It, it's there. But even when you walk somebody up to this and say, this is a buffalo jump, I mean, that's so far from the begin, you know, from, from telling the story that, that the part I was more concerned with is what, what had to be done to make this actually understandable to the public and, and to get them as excited by, by what it represented as, as those of us who, who had spent our careers uh, studying these kinds of things. And, and how, do you, how do you make all of the bits and pieces um, so that, that they are understood? By, by a visitor who, who frankly probably has no prior knowledge whatsoever of, of these kinds of cultures and whatnot. And that was my uh, greatest nervousness, if you will, as, as the thing evolved is, were we getting it, were we getting an effective uh, uh, story to, being told here? And, uh, you know, again, I think, um, I think that's one of the places where this business of committing ourselves to Aboriginal voice really paid off, because I think, I think by by having the ability here to to pair things, to to tell the story from the, if you will, the Western scientific perspective, side by side with the the Aboriginal uh, view of the world and their their take on it, that provided uh, an, a really unique experience for any visitor, and I think it has been huge in terms of of enhancing the understanding of, of the general public and, and enhancing their, their, quite frankly, their knowledge and, and, and what they learn when they, when they come here. So that, was, that, as I say, that was my biggest misgiving. Yeah, I, I see your point, the, the idea of you are more committed to saying we're going to do it and let's, let's make yeah. sure we do it right yeah. and that we're effective in telling that story. And it's a good point you make, I think, this, uh, the, the part about it isn't apparent, you know, because we tend, we tend to live in a country that doesn't have yeah. the apparent kinds of great mm -hmm. ruins. It's not the Middle East. It's not Iraq or Iran or Jordan. It's not Egypt. Uh, so people can walk up to Stonehenge and say, well, people made this. That's kind of all you need to know. People made it. That makes it amazing. Yeah. But I take people out in the gathering basin back behind where you got literally, you know, miles and miles of these lines. And I'll say to people, why should we celebrate people who pile them up in a pile and we don't celebrate people who line them up in a line, yeah. you know? What's the difference? <laughs> just because you can't walk up to it and say, wow, people just made that huge monstrous thing. But in fact, in terms of ingenuity, I like our story a whole lot better because in Egypt, they piled them up to celebrate one guy who was dead. <laughs> and here, they laid them out in lines 
to keep themselves alive by killing buffalo. So in, in many ways, I think we have a grander story. And in, in a related facet of that, I mean, my whole life, one of the things that has driven me crazy is, is people, I mean, in all innocence, will say to you, well, you know, Alberta has so little history. You, you live in a place with so little history. And I want to go, tell that to the guys who were here 12,000 years ago. They didn't think they had, a, they no. had no history. I, I mean, the place is loaded with it, but, but we suffer from, from this misperception that, that uh, Western, you know, Western civilized history, if I can put it in that sense, is the only history that, that exists. Um, and then it has to be somehow yeah, monumental. Yeah, exactly. You know, if it's not a monument, yeah. huge thing of yeah. some kind, it doesn't, yeah. there's no ingenuity or story yeah. to it. And it's just wrong.